Uh, this question came in from Max, and he didn't ex exactly ask this one. Um, what he asked me was, what do scientists not know? And I thought that this was uh, such a good question that I think I might turn this into a series on YouTube. Maybe um, potentially every Friday I might do a question that science just doesn't know the answer to yet. And so this is one of my favorites. And the question is, what is the universe really made of? So believe it or not, scientists still don't have any idea what the universe is made of for, for the most part. What we do know is that we can look at matter and we can, we can study matter, but 85% of everything in the whole universe is something that's called dark matter and we have no idea what the heck that is. And so let me, uh, let me dive right into this question. Okay, so to start with, um, this slide will look familiar to people that are in my class because I did, I did this question as a warm-up question. And so when we were studying matter, we learned that matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. And so you can look at the screen right now and you can try to figure this out. There's a few of these things on this list that are not matter. Uh, so a few of them are not matter at all. And most of these things are matter. And so I'll let you think about it for a second. Look at my big list here. And which of those things do you think is not matter? I'll show you. So everything that I crossed out is not matter, meaning that it doesn't meet one of the fundamental uh, definitions. And we need to be matter. Uh, everything has to, it has to have mass and it has to take up space. So we've eliminated light, we've eliminated sound waves, empty space, magnetic force, gravity, and heat. And then we have this one that I highlighted in green here because that's what the video is about, and that's dark matter. So I'll show you how extensive dark matter is. Now, of everything in the universe that we have been able to observe, all of the, sorry, all of the matter in the universe that we've been able to observe, um, about 85% of all of the matter in total is dark matter, meaning we can't see it at all. We know it's there, but we can't see it. Now, if you look at this chart, this, Im this image came from NASA. Um, this is showing percentage. This is all the matter in the universe, a little under 5% of everything. And then there's a big chunk of dark matter. And then there's this other big chunk of dark energy. I am not going to focus the video at all today on dark energy. That would be a great topic for another video. Uh, but that is not, um, that is not what the, the focus of the video is. Oh, this is great. So people that are, um, that are on Zoom are messaging to me. Um, and, it's, and it's basically uh, answering the questions that I ask. So that would be a kind of a cool way to do it. If you are watching on YouTube, and I see that a lot of you are, if you're watching on YouTube and not Zoom, what you can do is you can use that poll EV link that I have in the description to be able to see the video uh, or to be able to ask me questions on poll EV. I'm gonna focus mostly on the lesson for about 15 minutes. Um, and that'll, that'll be about as long as it takes me to get through my dark matter lesson. And then after I get through that, um, then I'll take some of the questions that are coming in in some of the chats. Uh, a few more people just, just joined. That's great. We have a total of 28 people watching on Zoom right now. Uh, and it looks like we have about that many watching on YouTube as well. And people that are on Zoom are saying it's, it's, uh, it can be better to watch on Zoom because you don't have the six second delay. So the people on Zoom are hearing what I'm saying six seconds faster than the, than the YouTube people. All right. So let's, here's what we do know. Now, the video is about the things that we don't know. Here's what we do know about dark matter. And this is absolutely mind-blowing to me. Dark matter is basically everywhere that we look, um, meaning that when you are touching this table, when you're touching your computer, or you're touching you, you're touching matter. Dark matter is 85% of all of the matter, and yet we can't see it, and it's everywhere. It was probably created about the same time um, as when regular matter was created during the Big Bang, but here's some really big weird things. It doesn't emit or absorb any light at all, meaning that this, this prevents our telescopes from being able to see it. Um, we have not narrowed down the size on it. Some scientists think that the size of a dark matter particle could be about the same size as a proton. That's probably the, the prevailing view, the common view, that it's probably about the same size as a proton. But there's some other people that say that dark matter could be in chunks that are as big as about 100 stars all put together. So we have no clue how much we have possibly narrowed down this thing. Um, it also just it passes right through normal matter. 
which means that because we are traveling through space and because we are just kind of moving through the universe um, as a big unit being pulled along by our sun and also being pulled along as we orbit our galaxy, there's probably dark matter that's just passing through our bodies right now. And then lastly, we still have no idea what it is. We have no idea. Um, there's a lot of different wild theories out there about what dark matter is, but it's weird to think that this stuff that is 85% of all of the stuff, we have no idea. We can't see it. We can't look at it. Um, but this middle one is key. Dark matter does have a gravitational pull. This is our big way that we can prove that it's real, which is what I'm going to get to. So um, reason number one that we know that this stuff is actually real. I'm sorry, I'm admitting a couple more people to the Zoom chat. Um, reason number one that we know that dark matter is a real thing is because we can observe the gravitational impact of it. And so this is just a little like, you know, simplistic gif of our solar system here. And what I want you to imagine is what uh, could you, as a as a you know thinking eighth grader or a different <laughs> different grade, grade level, um, be able to see that there is something in the middle? Even if, imagine we were able to just completely cover the sun, so the sun was invisible, but all the planets were still orbiting it. If the sun was invisible and all the planets were still orbiting it, we would have a really good idea that there's something there. That's what we've been able to figure out with dark matter. We can figure out that we can see all of the gravitational impact of the dark matter, even though we can't see it, we can't touch it, we can't observe it directly, we can observe it indirectly by seeing the gravitational impact of it. Uh, and I've got some pictures on the, on the following slides that are the proof that we can actually see the gravitational impact of it. Sorry, I keep looking over, I'm just admitting more people uh, to the Zoom chat. I see questions coming in. Um, and I'm going to get to all of those questions once I finish the whole, uh, the whole lesson. So keep firing away on there, uh, but I'm just going to keep powering on and then I will get all the questions at the very end, but pretty wild. Okay. So reason number two, this is, this is pretty crazy as well. If it was not for dark matter, galaxies couldn't form. And the reason for that is there needs to be a certain amount of matter that causes uh, sir, uh, sorry, a certain amount of gravity is necessary to cause a galaxy to even form at all. So gra galaxies only form because of the, the combined mass of that is able to pull everything to a central point. You need gravity in the middle and that holds it together. If it wasn't for the dark matter, there literally would not be enough gravity to be able to hold the whole thing together and form it at all. So basically dark matter is responsible for our own existence. If it wasn't for the dark matter, we wouldn't exist, galaxies wouldn't exist, solar systems wouldn't even be able to be held together. There's just not enough gravity. Um, reason number three, and this one's, this one's kind of fun too. So we've actually found galaxies that appear to have a lot of dark matter, and we found galaxies that have no dark matter, and we found galaxies that are all dark matter, and we found galaxies that are medium dark matter. And so what this proves is that dark matter is not just a, a standard property of matter, meaning that matter does not always have this dark matter halo around it. Because since we have found whole galaxies that are 100% dark matter and whole galaxies that are 100% visible matter, we know that dark matter is its own thing and it's different. So that's, that's how we can prove that it's different. We have some that are all dark matter, some that are no dark matter. It's weird to think that there are galaxies out there that are 100% dark matter galaxies. Um, that's crazy and mind blowing. Okay, so moving on to um, how are we actually looking for this stuff? So we have the, the best experiment in the world that's looking for it, and you can look this up. Um, you can find out more about it, it's, it's really cool. It's called the Large Underground Xenon Detector, otherwise known as the LUX Detector, L-U-X. Um, and so this is deep underground and it's in, it's a sealed off container and it, what it's looking for is this great term that I just, uh, that I learned as I was researching this video. It's looking for WIMPs, which are known as weakly interactive massive particles. So it's basically, it has mass, but it does not interact with things. So my fist interacts with my palm because I am regular matter. Weakly interacting pattern, uh, matter goes right on through. It doesn't actually interact with it. Um, so we, we spent millions and millions of dollars building this detector. Um, and so far we haven't found anything. 
sadly. Uh, got nothing. But we're still looking, and hopefully we're going to be able to find some of these weekly interacting mass with particles. Another example, I wanted to show you this video because this is amazing. Now this place is in Japan, and it's not looking for dark matter directly, but it's looking for another weekly interacting mass with particle, another WIMP. Um, and it's this place in Japan. Um, oop, I want to go back. Um, check this place out. This, this is real. This is the Super Kamiokande. The science from this experiment and the decommissioned one that came before it have already won two Nobel Prizes. It's normally filled with water, but we've been given access while it's down for maintenance. Lining the walls are thousands upon thousands of gold-hued detectors, each of them larger than a human head. They're the key to spotting a neutrino. Basically, they're light bulbs in reverse. So, in a regular light bulb, electricity goes in and light comes out. With one of these detectors, light goes in and electricity comes out. So, <clears throat> that video, uh, I recommend watching this in whole, uh, in its entirety. It's really cool. But, in any case, this has also not found any dark matter. Um, Kind of a bummer, but they they are looking for neutrinos, and you can look up um, about the process, uh, the progress that this place has made. Uh, it's really cool, and they go and inspect that chamber all the time, looking for neutrinos, which are another type of wimp, uh, weakly interacting massive particle. Okay, um, option number two, we're looking for it in space, of course. Uh, so we have a what's known as the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope. If you are following along on the slides that I linked in the description in YouTube, um, you can actually pull this up um, and open up this link and it'll tell you all about the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope. But basically what, this, what they're hoping is that as particles come together in space, um, high energy particles like from supernovae, uh, as they come together and collide, they might actually create really high energy light. They might produce gamma rays and that might be proof that dark matter is out there because if you have a high energy dark matter collide, maybe it'll produce gamma rays and then we can observe it and we can say, look, we found the dark matter uh, because we wouldn't see anything coming into the collision and we see the collision coming out. So far, unfortunately, haven't observed any dark matter directly, but they are out there um, and this is one way that we're looking for it. Option three, in, uh, in Switzerland, uh, at the Large Hadron Collider, which is at um, the CERN Institute, they're actually trying to make their own dark matter. Like if you can't find some in nature, make some. Uh, so basically we are smashing particles together at really high speeds. Um, in general, we're taking protons and we're moving them around this pipe. This pipe is a 17 mile long or 27 kilometer long pipe that the protons get accelerated up to close to the speed of light and then they smash together and they release energy bursts. So this is an energy burst that uh, was re released from that uh, collider here. And they're hoping that the energy burst will actually create dark matter. Now, here's the problem. Dark matter is undetectable. So we could make it and it could be created, but we would have no way of detecting it. But they have a very clever way of trying to detect it. Uh, there's a law in physics, it's a really simple law that we actually uh, study, and it's called the law of conservation of momentum. And so basically, when you have a collision, the amount of momentum that the particles have is conserved. This is what causes a Newton's cradle to work the way that it does. The momentum is conserved. So what they want to do is they want to analyze the momentum of all of the little particles coming off and see if they can figure out the momentum of the particles that they can't see. So basically, if you figure out the momentum of all the protons, the electrons, everything else that gets created, if there is still momentum that is not accounted for, that was created, that's the momentum of the dark matter. Um, again, so far not successful, uh, partly because they have a hard time trying to calculate all of the momentum of these really, really tiny particles, but that's what they're trying to do. Okay, um, this is the last way that we're looking for it, last of the big ones. Um, we're looking for it by studying galaxies. So. As we look at different galaxies, this is like I referenced earlier, some galaxies have more dark matter than others. And so over time, like if we look at how galaxies evolve and we study some galaxies that have a lot of dark matter, some that have a little, we might be able to resolve um, our views of them to a close enough level that we're seeing it so well that we can actually see the dark matter. 
Um, basically, by, by looking for galaxies and studying their gravity, you can see the gravitational pull of the things in it. This allows us to see all of the matter, which means that we could potentially see, uh, if we know what the regular matter looks like, we can see that, and we can study the gravity of all of the matter, then we can recreate where the dark matter is. So that's a really promising option. So um, I have some links, as I have always at the end, and I do want to credit um, this TED Talk was the best one that I saw. I watched this thing, and I created a lot of this presentation while watching this TED Talk. So if you want to listen to an actual astrophysicist rather than me, um, then watch this person's TED Talk. Uh, they will do a better job than I did. Um, Kurt Zagat, as always, ends up having a really good video on this. Um, and then definitely check out more about the Super Kamio Kande because it's just so cool. Um, but basically, this, this topic I find really fascinating because the idea that we are like surrounded by this stuff and yet we can't see it is something that totally blows my mind. Um, and so that is it for the, the lesson part of the video today. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go into the question and answer part. And if you are writing in questions right now, if you would like me to unmute you so that you can ask your question directly and I could even, um, I can put your face up there or not, please let me know because um, it would be kind of cool to get a question that is uh, being asked by someone directly, kind of like a kind of like a radio call-in show. So so ask away, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna look look through the Zoom chat and see what we got for questions in here. Um, <laughs> okay, Donovan asked a really good question, which says, um, "Is there an opposite of dark matter?" We think probably yes. So there is a, there's a concept in astrophysics that's known as supersymmetry, and you can look this up. Um, supersymmetry is basically that every fundamental particle has an opposite fundamental particle. So, like there's an opposite of a proton, there's an opposite of an electron, um, and there's even an opposite of a neutrino, which seems weird. Um, I, think, I believe it's called a neutralino. Fact check me on that. But, uh, but there's, uh, there's opposites of all the fundamental particles. So. If dark matter does turn out to be a fundamental particle, then there would be an opposite to it, we think. Okay, um, next. Let's see. Why exactly is it called dark matter? Great question, Daniela. Um, and the reason it's called dark matter is because we can't see it. It's since it doesn't emit any light and it doesn't absorb any light, um, it doesn't reflect any light, doesn't even interact with light. So it's to our eyes dark because we can't see it. So good question. Um, if the sun was invisible, would we still get sunlight? No. Um, we get light because our body is detecting that visible uh, light. And so, yeah, we wouldn't, it would be dark if we couldn't get it. Um, Evan asked a great question, which is, how does dark matter interact with matter in general? Um, and weirdly, it doesn't. It just doesn't interact at all. So it goes right on through. Um, it's basically able to just kind of pass right on through with zero interaction, we've found. Um, the only thing that it seems to do is have, it has its own gravity. So it does have gravity, but it doesn't interact um, like normal matter would. Um, okay, so uh, Dylan asked, if dark matter is called matter and is not a form of energy, why can't we interact with it? We have no idea why we can't interact with it. Uh, great question, but we just don't know. Um, so, so crazy. Um, Joey asked if I would do a short segment on antimatter, and that might be a really good video topic, so I'm going to keep that in mind, Joey. Nice. Um, Sophia asked, how do we know if it's different than just plain old regular matter? I asked this because we can observe the gravitational pull of matter on, as well, so what's the difference? Um, the, we know that it's different because we can see its gravity, and yet it doesn't interact with matter or light or produce light or reflect light. So we, we know that it's different because we can detect that it's there from its gravity, but we, don't, we can't actually interact with that thing. So that's how we know that it's different. Um, Dylan asked a good question. How are our planet's orbits affected by the dark matter? And yes, uh, but not, not as much as the, uh, the, the whole galaxy would be. So because dark matter seems to be relatively evenly distributed throughout our solar system, it doesn't have... Uh, it doesn't have a strong pull that's changing our direction. 
the bigger effect is without the dark matter, it couldn't have formed um, a galaxy in the first place. So the dark matter caused the galaxy to actually form by pulling everything to the middle. But it doesn't affect uh, our orbit that much, but it would affect it a little. Uh, we, go, uh, we go faster. Here's how it affects us. We go a little bit faster than we should, based purely on uh, just regular matter. Uh, so another question coming in from Ms. Bonner. Um, how does, oh, uh, actually, so she is, she's uh, repeating a question back that she got uh, from one of her students. Um, how does dark matter go through our body without us knowing? All right, so since it doesn't interact with us, it can just pass through. And so we have a precedent for it. So if we think about um, this, the super Kamiokande, what this is looking for is neutrinos. Neutrinos also are these weakly interacting particles. And a neutrino, this is like amazing, a neutrino can pass through a light year's distance of steel without even slowing down. That's how non-interactive it is. It can go right through, I mean, think about going through a mile of steel, think about going through 93 million miles of steel, how far we are from the sun. A, a neutrino can pass through 90, uh, uh, sorry, a light year of steel without slowing down. That's how non-interactive it is. So um, dark matter would react very similarly. So it basically just goes through us without even slowing down. It's really small, we don't even feel it. Um, oh, admitting, uh, admitting one more here. Uh, so yeah, it just doesn't. Uh, doesn't interact with us. That's a that's a great question, Sherrod. Um, okay, and how does the dark matter affect the shape of the galaxies? So uh, another good question, and it affects the shape of the galaxies because if it wasn't for the extra gravity caused by the dark matter, the galaxies would be a lot further spread out. So I referenced that we have found galaxies that don't have um, dark matter in them. I don't know what this came from here. That's weird. Um, so the, the galaxies that, that do exist that, um, that don't have a lot of dark matter in them, basically what those have, the, the stars are so far apart from each other that basically light um, goes right on through them, kind of like you're looking through a tree that doesn't have any leaves on it. You can see right through it. And that's the galaxies that, that don't have a lot of dark matter. Basically, the stars are just really distant from each other. So that's how it affects the shape. It creates galaxies that are more spread out. Um, all right, how does dark matter affect um, the different wavelengths of light? You know what I'm going to do? I just want to say this now. At 1230, I'm going to start the Kahoot game. So if people wanted to start migrating over to, um, uh, to the, um, whatever, you, whatever you call this, the Zoom, the 30 people, we have 30 people that are on Zoom. Um, at 1230, I'm going to start the Kahoot game to make sure that I have enough time to finish it before we go into our homeroom meetings. So I'm going to get through as many more questions as I can in five minutes. And then after that, send me messages by email, and I will get back to you this weekend with your other questions. So I've got about more, another five minutes to answer questions before I end this stream and then move over to Kahoot. Okay, um, I'm going to go into some questions of people that I haven't answered yet um, because I, I got a lot of great questions coming in. I'm actually going to start at the bottom and move my way up now. Um, oh, okay. Um, it looks like Brendan fact-checked me on a neutrino called an anti-neutrino. Um, I'd, I'd have to look that up, but thank you, Brendan, for, uh, for finding that for me. Um, is dark matter made up of atoms or something else unknown? Um, we, we have no idea. We think it's something else altogether. So, oh, perfect. Thanks, thanks Brendan, for the link. Um, so it's, we think it's very much uh, something else entirely, and the reason is we can see atoms. So we can, we can already see those, and we can't see, we can't see dark matter. So that, that makes us think that it must be something else altogether. Um, great question. Um, OK, so let's see. Uh, trying to get people that I haven't answered any of their questions. Um, what would happen if there was too much dark matter in one area? Great one. Um, I wonder, people can look this up. I don't, I don't know for this, but I wonder if there's such a thing as a dark matter black hole. Um, I don't understand why there wouldn't be because it would, uh, seems like it can cause gravitational, you know, lensing and, and gravitational bending. So that would be really cool, a dark matter black hole. Um, there's actually some people that speculate. So I'm, I'm not just completely speculating on this. There are some scientists that think that dark matter is just a whole bunch of microscopic black holes everywhere. 
So that is, that is one alternative hypothesis. So we have some scientists that think it's actually a particle, and there are some scientists that think that it is, a, um, it is just tiny, tiny little black holes everywhere. And that the reason we can't see it is because light can't escape from a black hole. So there is that distinct possibility. Baby black holes all throughout uh, the whole universe. That would be kind of amazing. Okay. Um, oh, and actually, I just answered uh, another question as well. Um, ooh, how do the reverse light bulbs work? Um, that's a great one. So, so basically, as uh, energy goes in through that tube, um, the energy ends up lighting, uh, like, like, you know, energy can be transmitted as electricity. So that little bit of energy that's created in the collision would cause, um, would cause a little bit of electricity to get shot out the other end. So it's collecting that light and creating a little bit of energy out of it. Um, but definitely, um, Bodhi, you asked me that one, definitely watch some of the videos on the Super Kami Okande because there's a ton of them on YouTube and they're all really good. This one from Nature is, is particularly good. Nature is like one of the best scientific journals in the world. And so this one has a lot of the science on it. Um, if you want one that has a little less science and is a little bit more just like almost tourism-y, um, there's a lot of news reports that are on it. But the one that I have linked here is more of a science one on it. Um, and this is this one's great. Okay, uh, let's see what other questions we got. We got just two more minutes of questions, and then we're gonna get into that Kahoot game. Uh, Michaela asked me, "Is dark matter dangerous?" Um, we don't think so because if it's not interacting with anything, then it doesn't appear to be um, having any negative effects on us either, because it can pass right through us, and it probably is. Most scientists that study this think that. We are constantly just moving through piles of dark matter without even feeling it. So we don't think it's, uh, we don't think it's at all dangerous. Okay, uh, a few more questions coming in. Okay, um, how did scientists discover dark matter if they can't see, feel, or interact with it? So, um, so Gianna, I think um, what you should do is take a look at the, at the presentation I, um, or watch the replay of this video. Um, so I had uh, one of my earlier slides that I won't rehash entirely, uh, but the big ways that we have been able to observe it is we can see its gravitational impact. We've also modeled galaxies and we found out that they can't actually form without, uh, without dark matter and that we've also been able to look at other galaxies out in space and be able to see a whole bunch of gravity, the effects of a lot of gravity in one spot, but no matter there. And that's what we've been calling as dark matter. Uh, so that's a really good question. All right, so it looks like it is about 12.30. Let me see if I can get, um, there's a few other good questions here. Oh, okay, uh, this will be our one unmuted question. Okay, so. Um, Emmett, I am going to unmute you uh, to let you ask our last question here. So, if so, when the Big Bang happened, there was an, there was a lot of energy, and that energy was hot enough that the energy could become matter and antimatter. However, after that, they instantly destroy each other. However, it's there, but if that happened, there would be no matter or antimatter in the universe. Right. So that must have meant that there was a tiny bit of extra matter created. Correct. And it's theorized that it's like 0.0000, a lot of zeros, one. And over millions of years, maybe even billions, that it create that there, it stopped, the, there was not enough heat for them to start splitting and breaking, destroying each other again. So there was a, a lot of extra matter mm -hmm. And the last of the reactions was just matter and antimatter left over. So how come we have that extra matter? So that is a completely different, one of those unsolved questions. And I think that would make an excellent video on itself. Um, because that, the, that one has about a much, as much detail as went into this video, uh, is about how much detail I would need to be able to answer that question as well. So I'm going to put that, I actually created a list of questions that science doesn't have an answer to that I really like that I would make videos about it. I'm going to add this one into my list as well, Emma. That's a, that's a great question. If you, if you look at the picture that I have up on my screen here, um, this is just our, our model of the creation of the universe. And so 
exactly what you're saying that dark uh, that antimatter and regular matter do destroy each other so there would have had to be more regular matter than antimatter at the very beginning and that also goes along with what you said about the symmetry yep the universe symmetry because the energy created matter and antimatter together and they they did destroy each other as positive and negative and yep. so but i just found that question i just I want to know the answer to that okay. because that explain. It makes no sense how we're here. I don't. <laughs> That's true. It, I want to know, I know how, how you know this, how we even exist currently when the principles of what we know so far says that there shouldn't be that extra matter created. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, Evan, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pause it here though because we're gonna start that Kahoot game, and I think you're gonna like it. I put together the first ten questions are gonna be review for uh, for matter, and then after after that, um, then there's gonna be about twenty questions that are gonna be about dark matter. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put on that uh, Kahoot. Evan, thank you for being the first one that actually got your voice onto here. Uh, I appreciate your question. So I'm going to start this Kahoot now. So if um, for people that are watching on YouTube, I'm going to end your stream now. And then I am going to put this, uh, get that Kahoot stream over. So let me see. Oh, no, OBS quit. I wonder how much of this even went.